Mac and Mac here with you on Birds 365. We got our guy uh, Eddie Kratz to join us and give us his eagle insight for the next half hour or so. Uh, Ed Kratz, I will spell a word for you. I need you to pronounce it for me. M A U V E. Uh, well, I'm glad it's not expostulation like the word John used. Uh, I just made that one. Too. Yeah, I don't know what in the world that was. I would say uh, Moav. Oh, you're the same as him. Yeah. I think, I think it's, it's just, Moav. I think I, it's Moav. I'm not positive. You guys I'm are overselling. I just think it's Moav. Yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> well, will today's eagle practice be a mauve practice or an orange or a green or a red or an indigo or a violet? What color designation will be the joint practice with the Browns today? So mauve is a color. I wasn't. Yeah, it I, is yeah, a color. It's kind of a purple. It's it is a color. That purplish. I do know. That's mm. why I said it. I should have went with a color I was familiar with. I probably should have went to uh, indigo. Um, yeah. How about avocado? Is that a, is that a color? We all know how to pronounce indigo. Yeah, let's yeah. stick with that. But um, give us your read from yesterday's joint practice. Johnny Mac said, damn close. But if you had to call a winner, it would have been the Cleveland Browns by this much. Do you agree with his evaluation of yesterday's joint practice? Yeah, uh, I, yeah I think so. I mean, I thought both defensive lines were very, very good. Yes. Um, you know, but it, it was close. I. I think that's kind of the consensus as the Browns won by a, you know, a teeny tiny bit, uh, but it was really close. I mean, you could, you could look at it the other way too, but I would probably go the Browns uh, just, just by a hair, something none of us are familiar with here, but you know, I would say <laughs> by a hair, the Browns won that practice. Yeah. And let me just go back to the break or prior to the break, when you guys were talking about that collection of backup running backs and, Trey Sermon. John, you're forgetting Trey Sermon had the two-yard touchdown run in Baltimore the other night. Well, I'm, yeah, come on. And he, ran, is not you know, he ran for 2.3 yards per carry yeah. on eight carries. Yeah. So, you I'm, know, I'm, put that into the mix. That room. pales in comparison to his 9.5 yeah. yards per carry last year yeah. on those two all-important carries that he had. Well, I, I, so he's I'm, going backwards. Look, I... The, this whole Trey Sermon thing, I think, stems from Nick in the offseason bringing him up and then uh, sort of unprompted, Ed. But now during training camp, he doesn't bring him up. Uh, people ask him questions about him, and then he'll answer the questions. I don't see this giant push from Trey Sermon. Have you seen it? I, I don't see it. I think it's clearly the top four guys, and he's fifth. Now the Eagles keep rotating him in with the other four. And I'm talking about, obviously, Kenny Gainwell, DeAndre Swift, Rashad Penny, Boston Scott. But I, I, I think there's a clear demarcation line there. What might help him, though, is he's younger. He's under team control for a longer period of time. And I keep bringing up with Rashad Penny, look, He's not going to be here next year. No matter what, he's not going to be here. If he plays well, somebody's going to pay him more than the Eagles will. And if he plays poorly, well, you don't want him back. So, yeah, I mean, Kenny Gainwell might not, or uh, DeAndre Swift might not be here next year. Exactly. Yeah. He's on a one year. I mean, you've got a lot of one year deals here. So, yeah, maybe that plays into it. I, I think Sermon came in in what, 2021? He was a third round pick. Um, yeah. Up San so, Francisco. Yeah. So yeah, he's got this year and next year left on his on his rookie deal. Um, so yeah, maybe that does help him. But right now, he does kind of look like, you know, he would be the odd man out unless you get rid of Penny. But you know, I think Swift, Gainwell, and Scott they're they're secure in their spots. Um, but it's Penny and Sermon that you're going to have to decide uh, between because they're not going to carry five, and no. I guess they'll carry four, which seems like an awful lot, but. Uh, they would be the four to me, and Sermon and Penny are, you know, battling for that fourth spot. No and, Kennedy uh, Brooks after the big fumble. Yeah, and, uh, Kennedy's Baltimore. got some work to do. Uh, okay. Kennedy might not even be on the practice squad. Um, no. And by the way, Trey Sermon under team control with the way the Eagles value backs, that might be a negative. That they would rather have the flexibility of just yeah, yeah one year deal. We'll 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 re put it back together again next year. 
Uh, I don't know that Trey Sermon has, has helped his cause so far with this preseason. All right, Ed, uh, I'm going to give you a chance. Johnny went there yesterday. Uh, I want to say Tanner McKee is certainly locked up the third quarterback job with his impressive performance the other night and Ian Book's less than impressive. Any scenario whereby these next couple of weeks, more preseason games, that Tanner McKee is breathing down Marcus Mariota's neck for backup duties at some point during this year, or is that completely out of the question? No, I, I mean, I actually put that in the story when I wrote about Tanner McKee coming out of the game is, you know, he's passed book and could he sometime here soon pass Mariota? And, uh, you know, I don't think so. I, I, I really don't. I think Mariota's got that job pretty much locked up unless he gets hurt, you know, and hopefully he won't. But, uh, you know, that job is, is Mariota's. He's got the experience. He's got a skill set that's similar that to, uh, to Jalen Hurts in that he can run the football. We saw him do that. Uh, a little bit in Baltimore. We've seen him do it all through camp. So, uh, you know, he, he can do run the, pretty much the same offense that Jalen Hurts can. Tanner McKee can gain some yards with his feet, but he's one of those long loping quarterbacks. He's like Nick Foles when he takes off running as yeah. he time him with a sundial. Um, <laughs> but I think McKee could certainly be the number two heading into next season. You know, Mariota's only here for a, a one-year deal. He's probably going to look to get a starting job after this season. Um, I don't know who will give him one, but he certainly can look and, and try to get one. But I think for this season, it'll be Mariota. Uh, and then and then uh, McKee will be the backup heading into next year. He talked about team control. He's a, on his rookie contract first year, so they've got him for – you know, several more years and they'll develop him and he could end up being a, a trade piece, you know, kind of like what they did with, uh, was it Kevin Cobb or, uh, someone that they developed, uh, and traded AJ a Feely. Uh, AJ, 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 I mean, they've done team. that. So yeah. he could be that guy, you know, in, in a couple of years, he could be someone that you'd look to trade if he continues to develop. I mean, listen, it was only one preseason game. Uh, you know, there's no fun, not overreacting, but we have to be careful not yeah. to be overreacting. So we'll, we'll see how the rest of the summer goes for uh, Big Tanner McKee. Um, and, and by the way, Ed, it just came to me. Extrapolate. That's what I was looking for. But, you know, the three fields and all the ADD action, it's very difficult. I'm very tired. So I couldn't I, come know, up with extrapolate. I thought expostulate was like a gym. Yeah, I just made it up. I just I made it up. Through and I, I think I don't, I don't, I don't make, up, make up a word that sounds right. Yeah, you had me, John. I was close, and Ed had to call me out on it. Thank you. <laughs> Well, like I said, I thought I was asleep when they taught that in geometry yeah, class in no. high school. No, you uh, were not. I'm calling you, you both were, out you on were, your you were, you were right to call me out on that. But uh, <laughs> and I'm calling you both down on your pronunciation of Moab. And uh, uh, yeah, not, well, a lot of mistakes. I blame the Eagles and the Browns for all the too much activity going on. Yeah. But you know, the the thing getting back to Tanner McKee, what impressed me most about him versus Ian Book. He trusted himself, man. You know, back foot, boom, balls out. And he trusted his receivers. Where Ian Books, who's got more experience, running around, afraid to throw the football. Yeah. But one of the guys who helped Tanner McKee was Tyree Cleveland, I thought. Um, to yeah. me, we never talk about Tyree Cleveland. We talked a lot about, not a lot, but a decent amount about Joseph Nada. I think he's better than Joseph Nada. He's better than Jaden Hazelwood. All those big, young receivers. I think Tyree Cleveland is the best of the lots. And that means if there's an injury, look, I don't think they're going to keep him. He might be on the practice squad. But if there's an injury, and already Quez Watkins and Britton Covey are dealing with hamstrings, I think Tyree Cleveland's the next guy. Where are you with those young receivers? Yeah, I mean, I, I went into that game against the Ravens looking for Joseph Nada. He was one of my players to watch. I thought, you know, they had worked him a little bit on the first team on that Thursday practice going down to, to Baltimore. So I thought, you know, hey, he, he's someone that you have to watch. And then, you know, he, he gets one catch. I think he had four targets. So, uh, didn't really shine, but Tyree Cleveland has some experience in this league, right? I think he was a set. Yeah, set Denver. Yeah, yeah. Pick of the Broncos. Yeah. So, 
uh, you know, he's played in some games. He, he, he knows how to get open. And I would say, you know, Deion Kane, I thought was going to be an interesting watch. And then he yeah. hurt his ankle. I know he returned in, in a limited form against the Browns last night. Uh, but I would say not so fast on Tyree Cleveland making this roster. Like you mentioned, Quez and Britton Covey both have the hamstring. Now, I think based on what I saw last night, Quez might be a little further ahead than Covey. Covey had that long sleeve yeah. on one of his legs, and he seemed to be, you know, kind of walking gingerly at points, whereas Quez was actually catching balls off the jug machine, uh, you know, on one knee. So he seemed to be doing a little bit more than Covey. So, listen, if you want to start the season with Covey on the IR, you know, and have him miss whatever you miss with the IR these days, three or four games before you can if, – Well, you uh, got to keep him on the first – if you put him on IR on roster, before, right. then he's done for the season. So you have to do that right. little manipulation. But you um, could, I could see them doing something like that in a way to try to keep Tyree Cleveland. Um, you know, I even saw them giving Tyree Cleveland some reps as the gunner on the punt return last night. I know Zach McPherson is very good at being a gunner on the punt. Yeah, he is. Team. Yeah. But I saw Cleveland taking some reps as the gunner too. So, you know, they're going to see what they have in him. And, I, you know, I would say not so fast on him making this roster. I think he has improved his stock. Again, here we are overreacting after one game in Baltimore. But I think his stock is it has improved greatly. And I think they're taking a closer look at him now. Uh, thinking, hey, maybe, you know, we should keep this guy around because now that other teams have seen what he can do and probably will see what he can do in these next couple games, he may not make it to the practice squad if that's where they try to get him. So uh, I would say they're taking a pretty good hard look at Cleveland, and I wouldn't be so fast to write him off uh, in terms of finding a, a roster spot here. I'll give you Nada, Cleveland, and Greg Ward. I'll give you the combined yeah. efforts of all three – under over more receptions than John Hightower this year. <laughs> Is John Hightower in the league? I don't oh, know. Yeah. Chargers. Chargers. Oh, yeah. He's looked yeah. good in Charger camp. Oh, I did okay. a Charger preview on my CBS Sports Radio show, not this past weekend, the weekend before. Said John Hightower, best looking receiver in Charger camp. That's and they got some absurd. guys who can play yeah. in Charger camp. That's absurd, by the way. Well, I don't know who you got. Just Jody, just I don't want to call out Cleveland, who you had on the show. Cleveland, Nada, and I'll throw Greg Ward in. I give you all three of them, and I'll take John Hightower with more catches than the three of them combined this year. Well, I mean, come on. But the, my point is, and I don't want to call out that. The, that sounds the, like a pass from John McMullen. I, I I don't I don't want to call out the guy you had on it on on that sh on your show. But I mean, come on, Keenan Allen's on the Chargers. Nick Sirianni never stops talking about that guy. Mike Williams is on the Chargers. Quentin Johnson's on the Chargers. First round draft pick, yeah. Um, the guy who has opened more eyes than anyone in Charger camp, John Hightower. Yeah, uh, I. Don't book that guy again. Don't you remember that happened here in Philadelphia? People Paul were gaga over John Hightower. He and was going to be the next yeah. all-time great Eagle receiver. For Not me. Games. I can't talk for other people. Well, Not he me. had the speed, and that was the year yeah. the Eagles wanted speed. They went into the draft saying, we want speed, and that's why they took Rager, and that's why they took Hightower and, and Quez. Quez. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he they caught a lot of track team. I think he yeah. had two or three – catches during his time in philadelphia and one was a deep throw i think it was against washington and went right through his hands yeah. well he did catch one though and then i think he dropped another but sometimes it takes guys some time to figure it out in this league you know he was by the way remember different. ed they also that was the year they signed marquis goodwin who finally showed up i finally saw him yeah he, in he the browns during, uniform he signed during the covid year um, and they had this track team. The Eagles would have won a, any four by 100 race in the NFL because Goodwin's a former Olympic, uh, either hurdler or sprinter, something. Yeah. Um, and they signed him or they traded for him. I forget how they got him, but he opted out. He was one of the guys who opted out because of COVID. Never even showed up to the Novacare complex. Yeah, it was a trade. Then the Eagles rescinded the trade. And yeah, I saw him yesterday. Finally yeah. showed up. It was the 49ers, I think. He was yeah, 49ers. Trade. He yeah. had a deal for him. But, hey, they still got some speed. You know, Devin Allen isn't going to take a backseat to him. No, that's true. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get a little more time on Thursday night against the Browns. 
But, uh, yeah, John Hightower, I'm not – I didn't even know he was in the league, Jody, so I can't really in my in good I conscience just, just say, yeah, he's going to have more catches. Make, make a mental note to check in every once in a while if he's getting uh, any reps with the Chargers. I, I just, will. Just saying. All right, back to the joint practices. No more John Hightower talk. Um, <laughs> are you concerned at all, best offensive line in football, the Cleveland Browns, specifically Miles Garrett, who was one hell of a football player, they beat the Eagles offensive line like a drum. I did not see that coming. I I, I counted seven, maybe eight sacks for the Browns against Miles Jalen Garrett Hurts. probably had seven or eight all by himself. Um, um, that's not good. What the heck happened? It's Jim it's Schwartz, practice. man. Jim Schwartz. The beauty yeah. of Jim Schwartz, he knows this offensive line. He knows where its pressure points are. He knows how to take advantage of it. You know, I even saw some times where the Browns were throwing some blitzes at the Eagles. So, you know, you come into these things and you don't know what you're going to get. You have to make some ju- adjustments during practice. And, you know, I'm sure that they looked at the practice tape last night and they saw some of the things the Browns did. So, you know, you hope the Eagles offensive line can rebound from yesterday's performance and, you know, they lost, obviously, Landon Dickerson early, so you threw Sua Upita out there, who I'm still not sold on. I don't, I'm not sure how he still – Tesla. Tesla stock. Yeah. yeah. Nice. I, yeah. You know, and then they put Josh Sills in there in, in the later sessions, and I thought Sills – you know, listen, I, I'm a big Sills guy as a player. I think he could start yeah, – got to clarify that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I think he could start on a few teams in this league. And, uh, you know, the, the line, you know, seemed a little bit better with him in there. But it was Miles Garrett that just wreaked havoc uh, all practice long until he left with what looked like a foot injury. Mary Kay Cabot uh, with the Cleveland.com said yeah. that he got kicked just like Jason Kelsey got kicked. So, you know, you don't know if it's intentional kicking or if it's just inadvertent in a pile up. Uh, but I'm not concerned, John, about the offensive line of the Eagles. I mean, they've got a body of work to lean on, and um, it's a good test. It's not like the, you know this is they're keeping. Yeah. School plus, uh, plus to be fair, you're not going to see Miles Garrett every week. Uh, right. He's to me, he's the best defensive player yeah. in the league, even better than Bosa in San Francisco, and you know Reddick here in Philadelphia. I think Miles Garrett's the best defensive player. <laughs> In All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a hypothetical your way. I do first, but Johnny, I want you to answer as well. Week one, Patriots, second possession of the game, Jason Kelsey gets stepped on and turns an ankle and it balloons up on him. And even the warrior that is Jason Kelsey, he can't even walk on it. So he sure as hell can't play on it. So he's done for the day. Maybe not the next week, but he's done for the day. Uh, with three plus quarters left to play in football, how are they reconfiguring the offensive line for the rest of that opener against the Pats? Yeah, I think they would probably move Cam Jurgens over in game and put Tyler Steen in at right guard, and then reevaluate during that week what they would do against. Well, it's a short week too. They come back in four days and have to play the Vikings, so you know you're going to have to make some quick decisions there. But I think in game they'd probably slide Cam Jurgens over and put probably Tyler Steen in or, or maybe Josh Sills if Sills is, you know, past Steen. Um, Jack Driscoll, don't forget Jack. Yeah, they're, they're working him at tackle. I mean, they seem to want him yeah. to kind of be the top reserve swing tackle. Um, but, I mean, in game, you're only going to dress eight. Um, yeah. I think they might have more comfort level with Jack at this point. Yeah. But I, you know, it's hard to accept Jody's hypothetical there because Kelsey's coming back unless you cut off the ankle. He's coming back, but and even if, if, if he doesn't to, play, it's the size of a cantaloupe. I'm sorry, if he, if he doesn't play, um, yeah, I Cam's going to be the center, and then it's like, all right, who's up number one? You know, are you dressing Steen? early in the season? Has Cam Jurgens taken any snaps at center this summer? Yeah. Yeah, um, yes. Couple, very few. They haven't had maintenance days because they built them in this year. So remember, we'd have those big maintenance days for Kelsey and all. They kind of built them into the schedule with the walkthroughs and all that kind of stuff. But there were a couple practices where they rested Kelsey, Lane. I think it's just Kelsey and Lane. Was it maybe Lane? No, Kelsey, Lane, Landon. In the practice, 
And in that instance, Jurgens played center. Steen played right guard. Driscoll played right tackle. Um, yeah. Really has taken some reps. Even Jurgens said he's taken some reps at center, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, just to keep his head still in it. So, yeah, he's – I think he would be the guy, even though they don't like to disrupt two positions to cover for one injury. I think it's a no brainer that he would be the center. Um, that's what he was drafted here to do. And they have guys that can play guard. And I, you know, I'm not sure Josh Andrews is going to make this team, but he's been, you know, a, a true pro since getting here to be the backup center. I thought he looked good against the Ravens. Uh, you know, he's certainly making the snaps look better than what, Brett Tooth was able to do. Oh, he was yeah. the backup center. So yeah. I'm not sure they'll have Josh Andrews on this team. If they do, I'm no. not sure they would even turn to Josh Andrews if Kelsey well, would get hurt. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to hamper it down. So I'm going to take J- Jody's. Here's the bigger question to me. And because this is, if Kelsey gets banged up in a game and leaves for a while, but there's hope that he could come back, then I think they might not move two positions. In other words, they might keep Cam. If they think Kelsey's coming back and they only need 10, 15 snaps from, then I think they might use somebody else at center and keep Cam at right Yeah, but wait, 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 wait. You definitely avoided that from, and you didn't name a name. From well, I'm who? trying to think uh, who they're going to dress. They're only going to dress eight people. Um, And... They're not as good. Josh Andrews isn't going to be one of them. No. And he's been Josh, doing most of the backup center saying. work here. So somebody's got to snap the ball for those 15 snaps. So I'm trying to figure out. Who would that be? Who I'm trying to. That, I I'm think Driscoll and Steen. Driscoll and Steen would probably be two of those guys that they would dress. Well, Driscoll, no doubt. I mean, he's, Driscoll. And then it's like, that's why I'm concerned about this team. It might be Josh Sills. But, yeah, yeah. you're not going to have a back backup center to dress. So it's got to be Cam Jurgens. Got to be Jurgens, yep. Got to be cuz he right. you're not even going to dress a guy who can be cuz Josh Andrews isn't dressing. Nope. Julian Good Jones isn't dressing. No. Brett Toth isn't dressing and if he was they don't want to play in center. Yeah. Um, John, you know, I'm surprised they haven't given Sills some center ups. I know he just got here last week and maybe that's in the plan, but he can play center. I mean, Josh Sills can play center if need be. Um but we haven't seen that, but no, like I said, he's only got here. He's only been here a week, so but, you know this is when we tell we're in the preseason portion because Kelsey's playing. Period. Yeah. End right. of sentence. Eddie, yeah. I'm going to put you to the test here, and uh, John references not often, but every once in a while, uh, the competition between the beat guys on trying to figure out who are they going to be the original 53 man roster of the Eagles. And John takes a couple victory laps because he's won and bemoans Josh Sills last year, said he cost him the contest. Well, That's I'm right. back at Ed Kratz this year. I'm <laughs> believing that if you're in the contest, you're going to win, Eddie K. You got go, my, you've got my seal of approval. Let's do it. How Thank many, you. How many defensive linemen are they going to keep? Ooh. Inside, uh, outside, edge, and we're not considering – any of the edge players as linebackers. So you know what I mean when I say defensive linemen. Yep. How many are they going to keep? I'm not even asking you who the individuals are. I'm just asking you what the overall number is. How many defensive linemen they keep it on the 53? I'm going to say, gosh, I'm going to say, I'm looking at Ed figures it out. I'm going to say is shitload a number. Because no. they're keeping a shit. No, no, I, no, I have. No. I'm counting eight. I have my roster right in front of That's me. That's it. Eight. Oh, I'm going to beat Ed. They keep it more than eight. The, John well, said he thinks it could be eleven. Yeah, I'm I think it's Ed. either nine or ten. The All question right. is, are they going to keep? And the the nine and ten for me are Derek Barnett and Marlon Tuipulotu. If they're yeah. only keeping nine, one of those guys got to go. If they're keeping ten, chances are both of them make it. John thinks that uh, Ojomo yeah, Ojomo's might his way it. onto the roster, which means they're going to yeah. keep 11 defensive linemen. And then I say, who the hell's covered punts if you got 11 defensive linemen on the roster? I think, I, think it's, I think it's too many. I really do. I mean, listen, here we go. Graham is one, okay. What's Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, Milton Williams, Josh Sweat, uh, Derek Barnett, Jalen Carter, and Marlon T. They're my eight. 
And then after that, you have Janarius Robinson, Noah Ellis, Moro well, Did you do Milt Williams? Huh? You do Milt Williams? Oh, yeah. He's on my eight. Absolutely. Yeah, Milton. Milton. He was picked well, yesterday. The, the two big Georgia guys inside, Fletcher and Milt Williams inside. So that's four inside. Outside, Sweat, Graham, um, Reddick. Hassan Reddick, and oh, See, he's, Smith. An, he's a linebacker. Eight. See, you said just defensive linemen. Wow. That's what I, count him. That's, I said Hassan Reddick and Smith don't count no. as linebackers. They count as defensive Yeah, linemen. I'm counting. No, I'm counting well, the yeah, edge That's 10 for sure. Yeah, you know, I was counting, counting those guys as, you know, outside linebackers. Okay. Yeah. Right, and that's um, why yeah, I'm at yeah. 11, because yeah. I'm counting the edge rushers. Well, who, who's um, the 11th? Who, a Jomo's going to make the team. Jomo's they're not going to make it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't too impressed with him against the Ravens, but he was a draft I, pick. Uh, I think they love a Jomo, and they like to keep their picks. I, yeah, yeah I they like to keep their picks. I mean, we've seen them cut their picks, but, uh, you know, maybe he's a practice squad guy. I don't know. But, I, yeah, Jomo's on the bubble for me. But, yeah, if you count Smith and Reddick, I'm, I'm definitely at You're 10. You're at 10. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, That's why I said there's a boatload. Hell, you know, he's hurt now. Patrick Johnson was playing well. Yeah. I texted that executive. He said they have 16 or 17 NFL defensive front people because I'm counting the edge rushers. Yeah. Yeah, Janaris Robinson belongs in this league. Um, yeah. He's not going to make this team. Contavious Street Contavious belongs Street's in this league. Street's not going to make this team. He's not going to make this team. They are so loaded. Kyron Johnson should be an NFL player. How's he going to make this team? Is Patrick Johnson going to be stashed on IR? No, if he's he healthy. Stays hurt. He seems like he's walking around pretty yeah. good to me. He's got a little wrap on his on his left yeah. ankle. He seems to be moving fine. When yeah, he's I don't think they can do it. You, know, you can't do that anymore. You have to have documentation. Back in the old days, the Redskins would uh, – um, the George Allen Redskins would place like 15 guys on injured reserve. You can't do that anymore. You have to have like real documentation and prove that um, somebody's injured. And Patrick Robinson, he's hurt now, but, you know, it's not a major injury, which thankfully well, because he was carted off. But is, um, uh, do, you, do you remember the welcome back Cotter days? Is Epstein's mother still available? Yeah. To a little Matt. Matt. <laughs> Well done. Well All right. Done. Now, wait a minute. We got to do this one quickie before we get out of here and let you run. Um, I trust Ed Kratz. And Kratz, I trust. Pronounce the name of the defensive tackle who was brought in here oh. for the next two weeks of practice. That's and he's just another one. Philadelphia Eagle defensive lineman who's not going to be on the roster when the season starts. Please pronounce the newest Philadelphia Eagles name. Wow, that's Olive. How about I'm that? I'm pretty sure it's not Olive. <laughs> I, I think you've got it name. wrong to begin with before you ever get to the last name. Phonetically, uh, Ed is correct. Uh, it, Ed Olive, is Olive is his first name. Which... I think it's Olive Sagapulu. Oh. I'm going to go. Uh, Ooh, nice. Yeah, I don't think that, that, that the last name's that difficult. I, I think it is Sagapulu. Um, you know, the Samoan I think, pronounced. I think it's, I think it's Olive. What's the Not Samoan olive. pronunciation of olive? That's yeah. what you have to crack. That's the code you have to crack. I think uh, it's expostulate is how you say it. Yeah. Well, but you uh, I, you guys are going with mauve. I'm going with mauve. <laughs> and you go with olive. I'll go with olive. And we'll, we'll uh, meet back here tomorrow and find out exactly who got it right. I don't think he was there yesterday. Did you notice him out there? I, 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 I was all brown. How do you miss him? He's 335 yeah. pounds. He's a DT. He's a, he's a nose tackle. You can't yeah. miss him, Ed. I, well, I, if he, I missed him. If I he see there, the Eagles every day, so I was focused yeah, more I, on the Browns. There's, there's um, a good chance he wasn't there. Uh, yeah. But when you when you see Olive today, please tell. By him the way, ask himself. Rick Saratella. Rick Saratella had him. Uh, they were working him out, so he knows. Really, Rick, Rick will know how to pronounce yeah, his we, name. We get, I'll, I'll shoot a text to Mister Saratella. Uh, I'll, I'll shoot a text to you, Kratz, as well, to say thank you for joining the show today. Uh, we will nice. do this again soon. Thanks, buddy. Thanks right, for thanks. calling me out, Ed. I appreciate right. it. You got right. it, my Olive. Friend. Repeat oh, after please. me. Olive. Olive. We will Olive the show in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> Ed Gratz will Olive <laughs> nice now. Well All done. Right. We'll come back and put a bow on the show on Birch thanks, 365. Ed.